All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to compete at BKFC 47 on July the 14th, and a very intriguing headline attraction for the BKFC middleweight championship as David Mundell defends his hardware against Mike Richmond, and great again to have Mike on the show once again. How's your day going so far, man? You know, the day's going good. You know, I uh, had a good training session um, this morning, and uh, then I had a slide out to do my pre-fight physical, just been kind of cruising around, taking care of stuff, you know, and I got work tonight, so been busy, busy. Yeah, and I saw that recent post you had where you were saying when it comes to bare knuckle, you're Mr. Main Event Sands won BKFC fight, which was the co-main, so it seems like the consistent standard of you being that headliner is still in play here for sure. No, absolutely. I, I do. Uh, I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that. You know, I'm still on the. Uh, I'm, I'm still on the top of the rankings, pound for pound. Uh, but not just the pound for pound, but. I'm up there on top when it comes to BKFC fighters that the fans, the fighters, and everyone want to watch. And I think uh, there's something to be said that Dave Mundell and his team, you know, they searched out me. They wanted to fight me. Um, I don't think Mundell's got a very big name for himself yet, even though he's the champion. But, you know, obviously uh, coming to coming to fight me, and if, he's, if he can take me out, I think he knows that that kind of put him in a higher light. And I think, you know, he's trying to take an opportunity to me uh, uh, coming off that uh, knockout loss. So uh, it's just a perfect opportunity for everyone involved. Yeah, well, that's kind of the intriguing part of it because, I mean, you kind of touched on it there with it kind of, and it's, it's sort of a rigid binary with combat sports too, right? Like it's like a concrete win or loss, like in as far as like the record books. But I feel like you didn't lose any ground. If anything, I feel like you increased your profile almost, just having almost finished the number two you know, pound for pound in BKFC. So, like, what were the, I guess, takeaways from that? Because, like, we're talking about in the rigid binary didn't go your ideal way, but I feel like you almost gained something from that performance too, though. No, yeah, I agree. You know, as much as that's some sort of silver lining for myself and the team to be like, you know, um, you even gain more fans and, you know, you can put positive spins on it. You know, at the end of the day, you know, time, time surpasses and then you look back on the record books and it'll still show as an L. But, you know, you know, in this still immediate time frame, you know, several months after the fight, you know, it's still um, the fight that him and I, Lorenzo and I put on, put on a major buzz, even coming off the loss, you know, uh, you know, I was uh, moments away from uh, having the bare knuckle world all in my hands. And that's just kind of how... Uh, this is kind of how the sport goes. That's kind of how combat sport goes. And sometimes it's right there at your fingertips and sometimes it slips away. But um, I'm still in a good position to be up at the top uh, with everyone else where I belong. Yeah, and I think you kind of kept to what you were talking to me about even before the last fight. Like you were talking about really wanting to make it a dog fight. And I think your performance really, you know, conveyed that too. So, I mean, yeah, no, it was a great performance. And that sort of sense and it's kind of a curious sort of layout for the card because I was noticing that another interim light heavyweight title fight is going on there and everything like that like what are your thoughts on that do you see that eventually getting upgraded as like a lineal title with time just because you know it seems like Lorenzo Hunt is more so seeking out like a heavyweight opportunity like what do you think becomes of that light heavyweight belt you know um you know I'm torn on it I, I love to see that Jared and um and um you know that they're fighting for that um dyer and jared warren excuse me uh i'm excited to see they're fighting for their they're fighting for the opportunity to get a belt and be up there you know in my mind uh i don't think lorenzo wants to give up that title so i think deep down if he can't secure uh, a heavyweight fight that he's looking to get or secure a big 205 pound uh, title fight then i think he will you know drop back down to to uh, fight another undis- do another undisputed uh, fight at 185 now if he were to vacate it then you know obviously the lineal then whoever the winner of a uh, dire warm will become become the lineal champion and then that'll just kind of be that weird then it's that weird area where i feel you know i'm still up there as the as the true uh 185er um but it is what it is that's you know i gotta go back down to 175 fight for that title i still ideally um i want to 
you know, I want the rematch with Lorenzo. You always want to get those losses back and that opportunity um, to fight him and for us to put on another huge mega event and a mega fight. I think, uh, I don't think the rivalry is over, um, you know, but I still got some uh, big fights ahead of me. Oh, for sure. I mean, you're among one of the most exciting, accomplished guys in the sport, so very much the case for sure. But, I mean, you were kind of touch- touching on it there, like not being at 185 anymore and now being at 175 for this one. And, I mean, you're a guy that's in the past cut as low as 135, so, I mean, you can navigate quite a few divisions. But how is this camp kind of different as compared to maybe some of your 185 fights? Like, is 175 a great deal different or not so much? For me, uh, you know, when I the, the past couple of fights at 185, I try to put some size on, and, and so now it's taking that size back off again and, and, and cutting down to 175. So getting more strict on the diet again, getting more um, just more discipline on the diet, and definitely got to even increase the cardio and conditioning to really burn those calories and to really bring that weight down so that I don't have as difficult as a water cut. So when it comes down to uh, cutting back down to 175, it's almost like I'm amping up the training even more just to, you know, try to make that extra weight cut. You know, when uh, me fighting, me going up to fight at 185, I'm carrying around a little extra a little extra weight, a little extra unnecessary weight that don't, you know, naturally fit me. You know, I got a little bit more fluff, a little bit more fluff when I fight at 185. So, um, you know, coming down to 175, you're really starting to trim things up, be more disciplined with your diet that I wasn't as much a discipline, you know, going up to 185. Yeah, and just interesting too, because like another time we talked, like before the Doolittle fight, you were indicating the interest in, you know, middleweight gold, but also you know, 165 as well. So it seems like there's a lot of different options out there and obviously not overlooking this fight, but if you were to get that ideal outcome, would the move be to, I guess, log that inaugural defense of the middleweight title or more so pursue gold at 165? Yeah, you mean, I get, you know, I think there's some big matchups still, you know, at 175, uh, whether it's fighting, um, you know, Bostwick has been on a good run and then him and Doolittle had a draw, you know, and then Doolittle and I had a war. You know, Doolittle looked very sharp at 175. You know, he's got a granite chin, um, a great fighter, and then he was even more lean and more a little bit quicker at 75. So that's a possibility down the road. Um, I think it would be really dependent on dropping to 65 to really dependent on how far down the road could I go back up to fight Lorenzo. Because I think if I make the decision to try to go down and, and meet Palomino and some of the top 165ers, then then I'm really starting to trim down even more. And then that just kind of, that starts to make it a little bit more difficult going way up and way, trying to put on good, true mass to fight those bigger guys and then coming back down and cutting. So I think it's going to be really dependent on, you know, what's the opportunity for the Lorenzo rematch down the road. You know, if that if that is looking like it's not going to be for some time, then I might consider you know, getting even leaner, even smaller, and then fighting around the 65, 75 range. Yeah, and I saw another post saying you were even looking at 155, so that would be quite the legacy in bare knuckle, just that many divisions where you have title accolades. Yeah, ideally I want to, you know, uh, I just turned 38. I still feel good. I still feel like I got... I, I still feel like I got a lot of miles left in me. You know, I still feel like I train at a high level and I can be competitive at a high level. So ideally, I want to go out there and and shoot for the stars to try to make a, a huge impact on the sport and, and, you know, leave something in bare knuckle that I can be proud of, you know, as far as winning titles or multiple titles and, and, and fighting in multiple weight classes competitively at a high level, too. That's also a big thing for me as well. Yeah, for sure. And I guess kind of directing the focus to this fight, I kind of liked the wrestling infused kind of announcement with a pseudo announcement, like you were teasing some big fights for the next year and you had the hashtag cream of the crop and you had macho man kind of posted up there and stuff like that. You you a big wrestling guy. It kind of seems like it. I was seeing you were retweeting some like Stone Cold Steve Austin too and stuff like that. Like, what do you think about all that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I grew up. I definitely grew up watching wrestling. I tell people all the time. You know, I was born in '85, so obviously I got you know to see some of the late '80s, early '90s action. You know, into the Attitude Era, obviously with Stone Cold and The Rock. And I tell people all the time that. Um, 
when it comes to pro wrestling, during, if you're around my age, you know, my age and a male, if I tell people, like, you either, one, you did watch pro wrestling, two, you grew up underneath a rock, or three, you're fucking lying. <laughs> because you fucking did watch pro wrestling. <laughs> For sure. I was going to say, I don't know why I just kind of thought of this, but I've got a buddy named Blake who was talking about like, oh, I only know the big wrestlers from back in the day, like Ice Cold Austin, and I still make fun of him sometimes for it. <laughs> Ice Cold Austin, yeah. My grandma would always say Cold Stone. You watching <laughs> Cold Stone tonight? <laughs> But yeah, and kind of referencing that tweet, you were like talking about how you were having conversations with your manager and like talking about the different potential big fights. Like when did it specifically become clear that, you know, David Mundell would be the next opponent and everything? Well, I think, you know, it was always in the picture. It was always in the picture for me to fight for the 175 pound title. Um, when uh, Ricky was a champ, um, you know, it was scheduled for me to fight at 175. We were unsure if that fight was going to happen in the time frame that we wanted. So then, um, obviously, the Renzo and I started having our little bit of beef online, and then we had the, you know, the running with each other at a, a show at Hollywood, and uh, then they were unsure if he was going to vacate or what he was going to do next. So then, the, you know, they about six weeks out or whatever. Um, I think it was about six weeks out. They were like, "Hey, do you want to fight for the?" interim uh light heavyweight title you want to fight for the interim 185 pound title against doolittle in denver and uh this is why i'm still unsure i'm supposed to be fighting for the 175 next but the date the date and the venue wasn't secure this was secure and i'm like well you know what if i want to fight lorenzo i still want to keep going down this path instead of just talking the talk and then just ignore it and us never fight then yeah then let me go and fight doolittle uh, you know, let's go out there, beat Doolittle, and then I know, you know, Lorenzo's going to have to fight me after that. So it just kind of, you know, a fork in the road came, and then I took the 85 route, and then, so then when I done with that little run, you know, the, the opportunity for me was still there with the company. They still wanted me to go back down and fight for a 75 um, title, which, you know, means a lot. They still definitely value me uh, in, in the company in, in multiple weight classes, so that's good. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely right up there in a number of regards, weight category wise. But you kind of were touching on it there. Like this middleweight title was kind of on your radar, even since Francesco Ricci was the champion. Like, what are your thoughts on, you know, Mundell's victory over Ricci getting that third round stoppage? And I guess just like thoughts on his general arc in the company so far. I think the win over Ricci, um, you know, Ricci's a talented fighter. And, uh, you know, obviously after the Mundell fight, and then you had the um, the Lozano fight, I believe is his name. Then you started to see, you know, maybe maybe Ricci's uh, chin reached his expiration date with Mundell, and because um, he was a talented fighter, but he got caught and he got put away. And um, as far as Mundell's reign, I just don't think he gets enough credit. You know, understandably so. He's a soft-spoken dude. He doesn't do much talking. You know, really, he seems like he's starting to try to do more talking, starting to have more of a social media presence. I know his coach is, backs up all his fighters, and I think he's really trying to find his identity as a, um, a fan-favorite guy. You know, before his two knockout wins, you know, he wasn't really getting many knockouts, and, you know, he wasn't really a big knockout guy in MMA either. You know, so then now he's feeling himself. He's got two knockout finishes. You know, now he wants to establish himself as an entertaining fighter. You know, before that, he was a lot of footwork, a lot of head movement. You know, he didn't really slip and counter, just a lot of slips. Um, now he's starting to put his game together. And, you know, now now he's got to test his skill set against me. Yeah, so do you think this match is almost coming at, like, an ideal time? Because, like you're saying, it seems like he's kind of progressed his skill set like at least in the sense of not going the full distance and kind of garnering some finishes in the last couple outings like is this almost more of a compelling test to you in a certain sense yeah i think it's i think it's a compelling test for me for him it's a compelling test for me one i gotta go out there and see if my chin didn't reach its expiration date and go out there because i'm a, i'm an exciting fighter i'm gonna go get in the pocket and i'm gonna bring the fight to you you know i'm always gonna be you're never gonna have to you're never gonna be booing one of my fights i'm gonna go in there i'm gonna bring the action and um so it's compelling for me to go back in there um 
yeah, to show the fans, to show everyone that I'm still the cream of the crop. Uh, <laughs> for him, you know, it's it's uh, compelling for him because now he needs to really show as he elevated uh, to the to to the highest level. I think uh, it's good in his favor because his skill set is tightening up. You know, if he fought me a couple years ago. Uh, he would have been in big trouble, but I think he's in good. I think he's really putting his game together now where it could be, uh, you know, a good fight. You know, two southpaws going at it, two skillful guys going at it. It's going to be exciting. And you sort of made reference to that almost in like a joking sort of way, and I kind of saw you had a post a bit ago, like posting the Snapchat, you know, story thing from the KO loss, so maybe I already know the answer to this, but is there anything you kind of take away from that last fight and as far as like, altering the approach a little bit at all or because i know you're a very heavy forward pressure kind of guy and have had a lot of you know demonstrable success from that like what are your thoughts on that i guess you know hindsight's a bitch you know uh, i probably would have still brought the pressure instead of trying to do a little stepping shuffle little hook that went to the cross i probably just sort of threw the straight left just initially just sniper to straight left in there you know but hindsight's a bitch you know what i'm saying like i could that little uh that little hook straight left hand could have worked you know uh, you know he could have been still two days and not ready to throw that that big haymaker shot that he did you know i could have went up there i could have fainted i could have seen how you know how attentive he was i could have waited for the end of the round you know you know i let hindsight beat me up but uh you know my approach is to always go in there and go after it and it, it just it, you know it played out the way it did hindsight will always beat you up but you know i'm an aggressive forward fighter and uh yeah yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, demonstrable success from that approach. So I understand that. And you've been talking about the quality of work a little bit like earlier in the conversation. And it seems like the Academy of Minnesota has always been the big spot. I saw you kind of recently working with Carl Deaton the third, and have worked with guys like Hamad Ali and John Castaneda in the past. Like who are some of the main people you're working with in this particular camp here? Yeah, some of those guys are always good training partners for me. There's some also good kickboxers that train there when they're in, you know, when they're getting ready for their stuff. You know, Andy Kiker is a freaking really good stud. He's a, he's a really good kickboxer that's probably going to transition to MMA and be very successful, I think. He's just a hardworking, you know, very crafty, skillful kid. You know, when Troy Jones is in, you know, when Troy Jones is in the mix getting ready for fights, he's always amazing to work with. You know, the academy has always been my been my home for a long time since 2010 and obviously when i moved and lived in pittsburgh for a little bit lived in texas anytime i would come home to visit you know i would train there and now that i live back in minnesota you know i, I gotta go back home to academy greg nelson and nad and all of them there and, and still train with those guys you know now once upon a time i was the young cat going in there and it was you know sean shirk nick lance jacob volkman paul bradley that was just you know, Nick Thompson, it was like you would win in there. And I was the young dude trying to make it. Now I'm now I'm going in there as the old head, you know, and I'm in the OG there now. But it's still uh, the room there. The energy's great. You know, it's the good fighters. They're still coming up that are looking for their next shine at the academy. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm always proud to still be representing that gym. Yeah, and just when you mentioned Sean Shirk there, I kind of just had a brief flashback to one of the countdown pieces where you were talking about wanting to, like, bring one of the BKFC belts and kind of put it among the, you know, mantle of championships at the gym. Like, is that spot still mapped out for this next one here? And like, have you kind of allowed yourself to think about what that moment would be like? Yeah, that's still the plan. That's still definitely the plan is to, um, to get in there and, and, and have my belt up there with, with Sean Brock and Rose, you know, to get it, you know, I didn't want to put the, I didn't want to put the interim up there, so I need to win a lineal, uh, undisputed official title. That's the plan to, is to be up the next all down and kind of be part of the, the history. And not only that, you know, the, the only, you know, I'm the only bare knuckle fighter at the academy. I'm the only bare knuckle fighter in Minnesota right now. Um, you know, uh, until my brother makes his debut, in, you know, the fall. Um, but to have that uh, there, yeah, that means a lot for sure. There's a lot of history in that gym and a lot of champions. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like you're a bit of a mind reader there, because that was going to be the next thing I was going to bring up. I feel like it's sort of flown under the radar, almost, in like a news cycle kind of sense, but just your younger brother, Sean Richmond, returning to combat sports and getting ready to fight in early fall. Like, how, cause, And you posted that about a couple 
months ago. So like, how's the picture for that working? Is there like a particular opponent and card lined up? Is he training alongside you? I'm curious to just get some insights, I guess. He, he's slowly starting to get in the groove. You know, it's harder for him to come all the way up to the academy. He's been training at another gym called Minnesota Top Team, and there's a great crew of guys there, great coaches, some great fighters and boxers there. You know, I, I, I love Jeremy and Jenny and the gym that they have down there. So I'm happy that he's down there with that gym. Um, once he gets a little bit closer, he's just kind of dusting off the cobwebs, getting familiar again. And once he gets closer to the camp, then I'm going to try to be there and get more rounds with him as well. Um, it's looking like September, October. You know, I don't know a venue. I don't know a city yet. It's still kind of down the line. Um, but it, it's it's looking like early fall. And um, I think he's aiming for 55 or 65 as far as the weight class. And, you know, he's excited about it. You know, I'm excited about it. That was one of the things I did tell I, I don't like when him and I fight on the same card. It distracts me too much. So that was, uh, you know, and I think he's the same. So, um, you know, ideally we probably could have been fighting on, you know, this card or another card together. But I think it was good that kind of we separate our focus uh, and fight on separate cards. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I would be too distracted if I was in a similar situation. I've got close ties with my brother. But it seems like you've got a very athletic family there. Like I saw you, you know, we're shouting out the rec basketball with Miles Richmond and we're calling him like mini Steve Nash and stuff like that. And like your younger daughter being in ballet, at least per the last time we were talking, like how's it been lately kind of just being dad and seeing the kids in their own athletic endeavors and doing their own thing. No, yeah, it's cool being back home and seeing, seeing the sports that they're really starting to get into. My daughter, you know, not really getting into sports yet, but maybe she will. You know, she's been, you know, trying different things, ballet, uh, gymnastics, dance, stuff like that. And, you know, I'm going to support whatever she wants to do. You know, obviously I wanted to try a sport, just try one. Uh, but maybe it'll be soon. Um, you know, Miles, you know, really liking, uh, really liking basketball and doing well in it. He might get back into football. You know, he did well in that as well. And now... You know, he wants to try motocross. And I'm all for that. You know, I'm all for like he really, he's really on, he's really on his mom and I about, you know, getting him a motocross bike and he really wants to do it. He's a big, you know, his uncle used to ride, his cousins ride, so he knows how to ride. He just wants his own bike, practice, and then you know maybe we'll get him actually competing. You know, sometime next year or whenever the season is. Um, and then Mason, you know, he's really kind of focusing on football. And, uh, you know, he might try basketball again, but he really, he's kind of really like a football. He'll be a sophomore year in high school. So, you know, he's really kind of starting to dial in on that. So, yeah, it's, it's cool. You know, it's cool to see your, your kids getting into their sports that they love. You know, I grew up wrestling, you know, my, you know, they, grew, they, Mason tried wrestling when he was younger, just wasn't his thing. Miles never tried it, and that's fine. And I never want to push a sport on him, but to see them like the sports that they like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm super happy with that. Yeah, that seems like a cool part of being a parent, just seeing like the kid kind of go in whatever direction and then you can kind of almost learn about a different thing too. Like they're kind of going off in their own lane. But like I was saying before, I want to be mindful of your time and everything, man. I guess one of the last things I wanted to touch on, just because you've got, like I was saying from the top, such a demonstrable trend of success, just all your bare knuckle fights in BKB, Valor BK and BKFC, none of them go in the distance, just that consistent finishing rate. Do we expect that trend to continue in this next one, or are you more of a guy that tries to keep it like fluid and adaptable and whatever happens in the ring? You're kind of undulating with that, I guess. You know, I'm a very extinct I'm a very extinctual fighter. You know, I don't really game plan too heavy. I look at strengths and weaknesses on both ends for myself and my opponent. Um but I'm not like, I just let the fight come to me and I play my fight. I let the fight play out. But um, never in my mind am I like, I must not come out in the first or the second. It's just how I fight. It's how my instincts react. It's how I attack. And I, it just happens that way, you know, honestly. And I do see it, um, you know, ending in the first three, first three rounds for sure. Well, I mean, it's a very compelling fight and great getting to have you on. It's always nice getting to talk to you. I feel like you've got a great mind for the game and are doing just great things in the sport, man. But like I keep saying, I want to be considerate of your schedule. So to that point, is there maybe a final parting thought you'd want to add as we're kind of wrapping things up, Mike? 
No, I just uh, hope everyone tunes in July 14th on the BKFC app. You know, watch me back in action. Watch me put on the show. Uh, watch me do what I love to do is get out there and fight, you know, in old school pugilism style. And, you know, big shout out to Lions Not Sheep and OnlyFans, big, big sponsors of mine. Spearman Rhino is on board with me, you know, sponsor me. I also work for them, but they're a part of, you know, my sponsorship team this as well. And, you know, uh, my management team, nothing but love for them. And, uh, yeah, man, I just... Uh, two more weeks in the showtime yeah it's going to be a great one at bkfc 47 definitely very much looking forward to that and checking out this middleweight title fight with david mundell and again to reiterate appreciate the time man looking forward to peeping this when it goes down but until then you have a good rest of your day man thank you you too my man appreciate it all right on this episode of bouts talking bouts excited to be talking to an individual who is set to headline BKFC 47, which all goes down on July the 14th. And defending his middleweight championship, we have David Mundell stepping into the ring against Mike Richmond. And great getting to have David on the show. How's everything going there, man? You having a good day so far? Oh, yeah, man. Grinding away. Yeah, and I'm wondering how it feels just readying to, you know, kind of make the first title defense like a lot of people... That's like kind of like a defining moment for them. Like some people really buy into that rhetoric of like you really need to get that first defense to solidify your place as champion. Is there a certain level of importance you're placing on this one, or is it kind of just business as usual, just another fight? Um, it's definitely important to me, but it also is business as usual. You know, I, this is what I train for, what I've been training for, and I am super excited about this one because now I get to. You know, we'll win this fight and then actually go out and celebrate and, and be cheerful for it. <clears throat> Last one was kind of bittersweet, so this is this is one I've definitely been looking forward to. Yeah, and I guess like for people that don't know, what is creating that difference in feeling? Like, why was the last one bittersweet, and why is this one not going to be affected by that same sort of dynamic? Well, my last fight was against Ricky, Ricky, and um. You know, he's a friend of mine. Yeah, and we never got to train together or anything, but if we were in town with each other, we'd, we'd meet up and, you know, go share a drink or eat some sushi and shit like that. But um, it was business, and we both, you know, are both trying to eat, and it just happened. But, you know, with this fight coming up, a face in Richmond is, is awesome because I have no ties with him. Uh, I didn't know who he was up until you know, BKFC and, uh, everyone's got a lot of, he's got a lot of hype behind him. Everyone thinks he's this great guy and I look forward to, uh, proving them all wrong. And I mean, the impression that I'm getting, I mean, this seems like someone that you've wanted to fight for a while now, like not in a way that's mindful of like, you know, bad blood or something beyond that. But it seems like this is like someone that you've seen as like a potential, competitor for a decent while now is that a fair characterization and if so what was the excitement level when this fight was initially booked and the bout offer came your way um it was it actually he is someone that it's just sheer excitement that I, I i just wanted to fight because again i he has a huge following a lot of people think he's great you know he keeps getting mentioned and like possible pound for pound best fighter and and i feel like i'm better than him but he is going to be a challenge and it just, it's exciting, you know, to go, go test myself. Um, although, like I said, I do feel like I'm, I'm just a bigger, better, more technical fighter. There's a lot of people who feel differently about it. So it's just all around just wins, you know, and I can't wait to go out there and show out. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, yeah, just a lot going on with this fight for sure. I mean, facing a former interim, BKFC light heavyweight champion he's a guy who's obviously favorably ranked at middleweight and you talk about how there's this surrounding perception a lot of people have of him of being among the top pound for pound fighters in the sport like entertaining your ideal outcome here like how much do you think that's going to serve your status because I think people that actively follow the sport realize how talented you are and how much of a great track record you have but how much is a win like this going to serve to i guess vault that awareness further into the forefront of what people you can see i suppose you know that's uh uh i guess a little bit of politics in there a little bit it's, it's funny how it works out you know because it could do a great deal and it could do nothing you know it just depends on which way they want to push it and swing me um 
I mean, for me, it definitely establishes my spot, but people can say what they want and they might, they still might want to know more. Like, okay, so now, now they're just hearing about me and now I beat Richmond. It's okay, well, what else can he do? And so as long as there's doubters out there, I'll just keep proving them wrong. But either way, it's definitely something I look forward to and I, I, it will solidify me in my own head knowing that I'm definitely belong there. Yeah, I mean, he's in a fairly interesting spot because I think that performance he had against Lorenzo Hunt, like, even though it was a knockout loss, I think it almost, like, raised his stock in a certain way, just, like, almost defeating the number two pound-for-pound guy and everything like that. Is, are you kind of taking him on at sort of an interesting time? Because, I mean, in a certain sense, he very much is, like, very, you know, vibrant and dangerous, still coming down to a division that might even be a better fit, but all the same looking to rebound from his first loss and bare knuckle is that something you're thinking about much like maybe what his headspace would be heading into this or maybe not so much hey you know i don't pay too much mind because it goes either way you know the the fight could have made him even more hungry he wants to come out and prove something or the fight could have broke him and with that being said we won't know until until we get in there and we actually start scrapping um and but that's also something that i i, I look at and i kind of get a little upset about is even when I beat him, I feel like people are going to be like, oh, well, you know, Lorenzo ruined him or, you know, stuff like that. So that's why I said with the politics side before that asked me about how I was feeling with where it would put me in the spot with all the talk. But long at the end of the day, it's business and this is a fight. It's going to prove a lot to a lot of people. And I'm just, like I said, I'm, I, I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, this is a kind of a good spot for you, though, just already being a world champion, and I feel like if you kind of go on a run here, it could really serve that, you know, pound-for-pound purpose, like, getting you kind of up in those rankings there. Is that something that holds a certain level of, I guess, like, esteem or focus for you, like, getting, like, formally ranked in that kind of a hierarchy or anything like that? It seems like you're really looking to, like, make an impression here with this fight and everything. Um... You know, I never really thought about it. I never really cared to, I never strived to be the best pound for pound. I just want to be the best, you know, period. So I guess it all kind of ties in with each other. But I just, I'm just looking to dominate the 75 pound division and and until there's no one left in my way and then I'll move up, you know, and I'll take out the next weight class. And then we can start talking about that pound for pound spot. That's interesting. You have title as like title aspirations in another category, especially with the context of there being an interim light heavyweight title fight in the co-main event of this card. So, I mean, definitely interesting. Is that a fight you're kind of focusing on, even in like a peripheral kind of way, or not so much? Oh, I, I 100% interested in that fight. That's my boy Jared. He's my teammate, my main training partner, which is the whole reason why I fight at 75 and I let him handle the 85 pound class right now. And uh, it's kind of funny because we joke around saying, like, I'm going to hold the belt below and above his weight class, you know. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go to 85 next unless he decided to stop fighting for whatever reason. Um, I would, I guess I'd start looking at the 205 class. I mean, that's interesting because, I mean, you've definitely entertained fights in that kind of area before and stuff like that and I mean talking about you know Lorenzo Hunt I mean if he's looking to stay at cruiserweight I mean he's obviously looking at heavyweight as well I mean that could be an interesting fight I mean we were talking about like the Richmond fight and him coming off a fighting Hunt there is that a fight that you would like to get one day is Lorenzo a guy that you'd be interested in testing skills with at some point I mean it's definitely uh, you know something that I feel like we might run into one day I mean as as these names keep popping up like there's not too many people out there at this level that we're at now so in order to keep you know the fans excited and and changing things up like i'm just i'm just looking for all the big names and it's like i said it's just it's at the end of the day it's just business it's just business so if i run into him cool and if i don't it's whatever but i mean he's gonna wind up running either to me or jared real soon so something's gonna happen and you kind of touched on it earlier, just like the close training kinship with Jared Warren. Like, it seems like there's a great group of 
bare knuckle fighters that trains with that collective there like how important is that i mean obviously at the end of the day competitively it's an individual sport but i feel like just all the great bkfc fighters from that camp it really helps everybody kind of like collectively rise up have you kind of found that to be the case and can you speak to that a bit yeah the, the shift to may team shift shift management you know we're, we're here to take over you know, we got me, we have Brandon Superman Allen, Jared Warren, Crystal Pittman. You know, we got some other guys coming up and Knox, uh, Tony Murphy. You know, we're 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 taking over and everyone, all eyes are gonna be on us and we're gonna show you guys, you know, something special. Yeah, and it seems like a good spread too. Like I mean, just across like multiple different divisions and stuff like that so it really seems like there's a lot of potential for a broader kind of takeover especially when some of those people you've mentioned are ranked and are like right at the top of the respective divisions there yeah and just uh it just goes and it's just i mean you can't you can't doubt the gym but you can just see what it's producing what it's kicking out we're all we're all title contenders right now or hold a title you know so it's just it's amazing, you know, to be able to train with these guys every day and really push and grind with each other. It's second to none. And uh, and like I said, we're just you guys will just keep an eye on us because you're going to see some big moves coming. And I mean, I feel like you've been really putting it together lately, like you've got an impressive win streak, but even in like the last couple, just like putting together some pretty emphatic finishes. And when I was talking to Mike Richmond the other day, he was like really picking up on that too like i think he was inferring that maybe there's like an additional confidence or it's like an extra something in the approach that's really like garnering these finishes for you is that kind of like a fair assessment and if so like what do you think that is like just in terms of getting some of these guys out of here with emphasis recently you know it, it always it always um how do I put that it, it definitely pumps me up you know knowing that you know, when you go in there and you finish a guy you just it makes you feel better makes you you know it, it blows your head up a little bit but I level myself out you know I don't I don't really pay attention to that too much I look to the next opponent we start training as if you know we got a monster in front of us and then when it comes time you know I don't even really look for the knockout I just I look to hit him and punish him and it just usually comes with that bit of momentum on my side for sure but it's not something i'm banking off of just pure skill and precision yeah and i mean you talk about the focus preparation for a lot of these different individuals this fight's very interesting in a lot of regards because like we were talking about before richmond had that light heavyweight title unification earlier in the year and with you winning the middleweight title in December, I feel like this presents a chance for you to show off a lot of like really like shored up new skills in recent times, just with it being a bit over half a year since you last fought. Are you almost looking at it like that too? Like this fight really presenting an opportunity to show off like a wealth of new skills you have or even like further refined skills that were already there? Yeah, that's pretty much it. We just we just sharpen the tools we have. You know, I've, I've had I have a wide arsenal already. I've had it from the beginning and I just get more comfortable in there, and I I think that shows every time. It just I just look a little bit better and a little bit better, and you know just gonna keep going up. And uh, that time off was not something I wanted. Um, I wanted to fight sooner, but it was it was one of those things where I I really wanted to fight back here at home. I was really hoping for Tampa, um, and I was told that that's where they were gonna come in July. So I was kind of like waiting until then otherwise they could have maybe fought you know in april uh, but i didn't want to risk an injury and then not being able to show out from my hometown you know so i i, I played smart i waited till now and not only that on the on the back side of that as well is there's there wasn't really anybody to fight that made sense you know richmond was in there going after lorenzo any of the top five guys were already coming off a loss. So it was like there wasn't a, a, a good opponent. And anyone that would have fought, I felt, would have put me in that realm. Well, okay, he fought him, but he's he's coming off a loss. He should have beat him. So it was, it was kind of a, a touchy situation with all, all that together. And now back to that, even though Richmond's coming off of a loss, he's coming off a loss of a heavier weight class. 
So um, he's still the top in the division, you know, and unless they're going to give me their poster boy, which they seem to be protecting. I'm talking about Mike Perry. This is this is the, the best one to, to step up to the plate right now. So we're going to rock it. Yeah, and obviously more questions I have related to your actual upcoming opponent, but I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't kind of like briefly touch on you mentioning Mike Perry there because I was noticing you guys have like an MMA history with one another across amateur and pro just had a pair of MMA fights with Mike Perry. Is that something that was like visited in any kind of way? Like was there some attempt at creating dialogue about a bare knuckle fight and then it didn't pan out? That seems to be the case from what you're saying, but curious for you to, I guess, expand upon that a bit more. Um, you know, so obviously, yeah, we do have history in MMA. Um, the dude uh, is tough, and I don't mean that as a compliment because he just gets beaten and he takes it, and that's good for him. Um, but back in the day, like, I literally took him a little light, and I, I went in there and I exhausted myself whooping his ass until the end, and when I finally got caught. I know I've grown since a fighter since, and I feel like he's actually regressed a little bit. I don't see anything remotely decent you know that he does it's very sloppy uh he banks all off of he, he thinks he's powerful so he banks all off his power and being tough and i just in this in this world bkfc you can't do that because you know i'll slice him up and if he if he gets too overzealous and he jumps in too hard i'm putting him smooth out too Yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like he's on a bit of a different arc, like not saying anything like derisive about him, obviously, but it seems like his route is like taking on a lot of these guys that have like the big names, but it's not in a specific like, you know, climb the division, challenge for a title kind of hierarchy. So it seems like that's not even within his motivation, I guess. It's And it's kind of annoying because he's, he's the one making all this big money and I'm the one with the belt, like, like. I'm the champ. So why is why isn't he coming after me before? You know, I told him before I fought Ricci that I was gonna I was gonna get that belt and then that he was gonna be my next opponent and it was all good. That's what it was supposed to be after I fought Ricci and took the belt. He even got on an interview and was like, you know, congrats to Dave. You know, we fought before. I look forward to you know trying to take the title from him. And then all of a sudden, silence, nothing. Didn't hear anything from him. And, and it's like like somebody told him he wasn't allowed to talk about it anymore because crickets. But, you know, I think after fighting Richmond and building a little bit more of a name for myself, and I, I, I don't see how he could turn it down. I don't see how the people w won't want it. Like, who else are they going to put in there with me? Nobody else makes sense. So he's the only avenue after this fight. Well, that's kind of an interesting facet with this fight now that you say that because you are the reigning champion at 100 75 but in a certain sense this almost reads like a coming out party just in terms of it being an opportunity to get out there and like a big main event you're defending the title you're facing one of the more like known guys in the company I mean not to say that you've never been in a main event but like when you were in there with Lombard there was like certain circumstance to why that panned out the way that it did but this kind of reads like and like and not like they're setting up Richmond to fail obviously but this could seem like an opportunity to really like launch yourself and get the broader awareness out there so are you kind of seeing that part of this fight as well absolutely because i still feel like like i said a lot of people count me out just because of richmond's name and and they know him more you know so people think that i'm a nobody and i just know that i'm gonna shock everybody come july 14th they're all gonna see and I mean, a lot is made of his pound for pound status, as we've talked about a bit during this chat, but like X's and O's wise in terms of like what his bigger skills are, like what are some attributes he brings to the table that you think are like really indicative of him being strong in those kind of regards? Because obviously like he's got that flawless finishing rate in bare knuckle and a lot of calculated forward pressure. But what would you say some of his better attributes would be? You know, I, I guess just is his ability to dig deep and keep going but i mean i i really don't know i'm not impressed by much of what i see we, we fight very similar styles um maybe just the fact that he will push forward you know, that's, that's a tough one like I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to dig to find something nice to say but i just can't like i'm just not impressed honestly i'm just i'm not worried about him 
Yeah, you're just confident in what you're bringing to the table and everything like that. And I guess based on what you're saying, I mean, it seems like a guy you probably watched for quite a while now. So maybe you've like really navigated the tape and kind of know the exact approach that you would want to bring to, you know, besting him. But kind of interesting that you said the styles are kind of similar. So are you almost going to beat him at his own game in a sense, like in terms of like using attributes against him that he generally uses against others? Absolutely, you know, because uh, I'm sure, as everyone knows, we're both south balls, you know. Uh, so we all take the same angles against our other opponents who usually stand orthodox. So now that we have two south balls and they're together, like, the certain angles that we're used to don't work anymore. And I train with south balls every day. Jared Warren's south ball. You know, I got other teammates, Knox's south ball. You know, so I'm, I'm constantly moving with these guys. So it's, uh, it's not uncomfortable for me. It's just another day in the office. On top of that, I just feel like I'm the bigger guy. I feel like I have way better accuracy, way better, you know, eyes. It just movement, uh, footwork, everything. So I just feel like I'm better than him everywhere. And again, I just can't wait to show everybody. And I know some fighters get kind of heavy in like the visualization and stuff like that. And they have like a predominant visualization that can often pop up when they're mulling over those different variables to that point are you someone who kind of gets heavy into that visualization and if that's the case is there like a predominant one that you see in terms of how this fight will end yeah uh so basically i think you're just talking about using my imagination and shadow boxing and just going through the situations that will happen in the fight or that are most likely to happen in the fight and you know, uh, that's something we do every day, uh, you know, to all of our opponents. We know what they kind of look for from what we've seen, uh, reviewing tape and stuff like that. And um, I see him reaching for some of those body shots and just getting clipped because he's got to, he's got to, I, I always, I'm used to fighting taller guys, you know, and he's actually, I believe he's shorter than me. So he's going to have the, the trouble of closing the distance now. And if he comes in there reckless and he, and he throws some of those, body shots that I've seen I'm gonna come right over the top and I don't think he's gonna be able to you know withstand them and how much does it like galvanize your already strong resolve to fight in Florida like you were talking before about how it was like pretty important to you know fight in that state and how it kind of like created that bit of a hold up between fights there so it sounds it sounds like that very much like galvanizes you and everything but can you talk about the motivation that you know partisan presence kind of serves with your fights there just being able to have the the the, the fans my, my friends my family come out and the, and the energy and everyone cheering for you and just like you know pumping you up and the excitement behind all that it's just it's unreal you know and, and it doesn't really seem to matter where I go, everyone seems to follow me, which is awesome. But to be able to treat them to something like this, it's right here in our backyard. They got to drive, you know, three hours to Miami or, you know, fly out of state to follow me around. They get to get to be here. We all get to just sit, sit down and enjoy the show. And, you know, so that's that's the motivation right there is just having all that energy be sent my way. Yeah, for sure. Just cool to see it all come together like that. And, I guess this is kind of an interesting one, and it's predicated on a couple things with how this fight goes, but are you looking to have, like, a stronger strength of schedule this year, or is the idea kind of similar in as far as, like, you'd like to be part of bringing some of these bigger events to Florida? Like, is there the desire to have, like, a stronger strength of schedule this year? I mean, you did get in three fights last year, but are you looking to maybe get in a similar amount of fights this year or not even thinking of it in that way I love to fight about every four months which averages out three times a year obviously right so that would have been ideal obviously i'm not on track for that right now so i'm hoping to at least get one more in by the end of this year and whether it's here at home or if they want to fly me out of state or somewhere else like that's not too much i just i just want to be able to to you know it's been a while since i fought in tampa it was a whole year because this time Last year, I fought Dave Simpson. That was in Tampa, you know. So it's, it seems if it's once a year to give these to my my fans, that's what I want to do. Outside of that, we can run around the town and see see where else they want to bring me. Yeah, and who knows if you're eyeing cruiser weight? I mean, less of a weight cut, maybe it facilitates a quicker turnaround, so it could maybe help out in a certain sense too. Definitely. And it's, I'm not I'm not eyeing it up right now per se, right? Because I still got some work to do at 75 while I'm still 
able to make it to this weight. I want to stay here for I don't like if I jump up, but then I get heavy and then it's harder to get back down and all that nonsense. Like I said, I want to, I want to stay here and dominate this division. And then when there's nobody left, then we'll talk about moving up. Yeah, for sure. And what does that represent to you? Like in terms of like a certain amount of title defenses you'd like to have to establish the legacy? Is it just a matter of like going down the top five and beating as many guys as you can? Because I mean, certainly a wealth of options just with the guys right now. I mean, you're fighting the number one guy in Richmond, obviously, but you mentioned Perry, who's number two, and then got guys like Doug Coltrane and Dakota Cochran kind of like filling out the three and five spot, respectively. Francesco Ricci is in there for number four as well. So, I mean, it just seems like a, there's a wealth of talent in the division. So, I mean, does that legacy and that run, I guess, is that represented by beating all of the guys who are ranked right here? Is there a certain number of title defenses you'd like to get to kind of like establish the legacy? Like, what does that represent to you at middleweight? I don't really have, um, you know, a set number or any set people. I just, I just want to make it clear that I'm the best 175er out there. And when there's no more question about it and it's time to move on, then I will. And I don't really know when that's going to be. It could be, you know, five years from now. It could be a year from now. It's just, we're just going to see. We're going to play it out and, and just, we're just going to ride this wave for a little bit and, and see what happens. Well, I mean, definitely exciting times. Great getting to see you back into the fold and defending this title and everything. But it, I do want to be mindful of your time, like I was kind of saying earlier, David. So kind of in line with that, is there any final parting thought you might want to add as we're kind of wrapping things up here, man? You know, I just want to thank everyone for, uh, you know, all the support and everything. You know, the uh, the amount of people coming out to the show to watch it is, is amazing. And it just, it makes me feel amazing like to know that everyone's out there um you know supporting me um you know my team all my sponsors you know everyone helping me get ready you know thank you and that's pretty much it man yeah there's a lot going into this one and just again to reiterate i really much appreciate you giving me the time and yeah very stoked to see this bkfc 47 card and you know counting down the days until July 14th, we're getting very much closer to that, about a week out as of this recording. And again, to reiterate, appreciate you coming on and giving great insights ahead of this Mike Richmond fight. You have a good rest of your day, man, and looking forward to checking out the fight when it goes down, too. No problem, brother. I appreciate you having me on and helping me spread my word, you know. So anytime, let me know.